Wetlands are used for foraging, while tree islands and other uplands provide resting and breeding habitat. An analysis of stomach contents can be used to determine the diet of Everglades pythons. Biologists have determined that a Burmese python consumes a large and rather disturbing number of prey items in order to reach 13.5 feet in approximately 5.5 years. These items include one raccoon, one opossum, five American coots, six little blue herons, eight ibises, 10 squirrels, 15 songbirds, 15 rabbits, 30 cotton rats, 72 mice, and 4 alligators, about 4 feet in total length. As the python population continues to grow, their main prey items, birds and small mammals, could be adversely affected by predation. However, detecting population declines may prove difficult. This is especially true for water and wading birds, due to the seasonal movements exhibited by these species. Small mammal populations may be adversely affected by python predation. Anecdotal evidence suggests this is the case. Dr. Frank Mazzotti of the University of Florida has worked in Everglades National Park for many years and is, is currently part of the Python Control Program. Dr. Mazzotti notes that marsh rabbits used to be found all over the park, but now are only rarely observed. The same could be said about muskrats. The frequency at which marsh rabbits and muskrats are found in the stomach of Everglades pythons suggests that pythons may be responsible for the decline of these species. Perhaps the species most at risk due to py the python invasion is the endemic and critically endangered Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. Only a few thousand individuals remain in isolated subpopulations within the Everglades. It has been determined that predation by native predators is an important factor holding the sparrow populations in low numbers. Burmese pythons may be the straw that breaks the camel's back as recovery of the sparrow species goes. The final blow to the dwindling sparrow population. Pythons are taking a surprisingly high number of songbirds that include arboreal species. The short stature of the Marl Prairie vegetation, to which the sparrow is restricted throughout its life cycle, may make it even more vulnerable to python predation. as sparrows forage, nest, and roost near the ground. The Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow may be subject to an increasing rate of predation. Due to predation by Burmese pythons, the number of small mammals available to native predators may decrease. Consequently, native predators may increase predation on bird species including the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. A race to stop the pythons from potentially devastating the native animal community of the Everglades is underway. So the good news is as many obstacles as there are, um, there are a lot of people at work on this issue. Right now we've got Burmese pythons spread across thousands of square kilometers of South Florida. Their population continues to expand. The unfortunate fact is that to my knowledge, no population of introduced reptiles has ever been eradicated. What's of most important is trying to fully understand more of their, get a, get a better vignette, a little window on their life so you can find out what their Achilles heel is, if there indeed is one. In the case of pythons, we don't currently have any tools that will allow us to eradicate that population. There probably isn't a silver bullet that's going to be available in the short term. That doesn't necessarily mean that we should be depressed or that we should just give up. We do have the opportunity to develop control tools and to recruit people to help with this effort. And we might be able to knock them back at various spatial scales, whether they're going to deplete certain prey populations to the point that the population decreases, or whether native animals might be able to slowly adapt to the python's presence 
are currently unknown clusters. A lot of um, scientists that are working on that core issue, and we're trying to um, they're, they're trying to get a hand on how best to bait these, how best to trap these, how best to use their pheromone systems against them so that you can actually work across this on, on a much wider realm. Or if you decide that some parts of the Everglades, you'll work on those more than others to preserve the animals and, and the habitats that are there. Um, I think we're going to get, we're going to come a long way in five years. Will we have solved it? No. But I, I do think that we will have a lot more tools at our disposal. The historic deterioration of the Everglades ecosystem was primarily the result of changes in water management and related activities. Now new challenges are emerging as invasive animals and plants threaten the ecological integrity of the Everglades system. Over the coming decades, scientists, engineers, and concerned citizens will work to overcome these challenges in order to restore and maintain the Everglades, a national treasure.